the unbelievable engineering and history of the Golden Gate Bridge. Critics mock the concept of the Golden Gate Bridge, as they do with many civil engineering projects before they are built. The Golden Gate is 1.5 miles wide and connects the Pacific Ocean to San Francisco Bay. Some have claimed that bridging this gap is either impossible or prohibitively expensive. In this video, we will show you how the Great Golden Gate Bridge was built. Be sure to like and subscribe for more. The History of the Golden Gate Bridge 1916 was the year that everything began. Or more accurately, it began approximately 40 years earlier, in 1872, when a railroad entrepreneur named Charles Parker proposed building a bridge to cross the Golden Gate Strait. The Golden Gate Strait is a stretch of water that is approximately 3 miles or 5 kilometers long and connects the San Francisco Bay to the Pacific Ocean. However, the project did not begin to gain traction until the early 20th century, when the population of the area was growing at an alarming rate, and there was a significant problem with traffic congestion at the ferry docks. James H. Wilkins, a structural engineer and the editor of San Francisco called Volatin, made contact with Michael M. O'Shaughnessy, an engineer from the city of San Francisco and the two of them began discussing what would it take to make a bridge between the city and the marine headlines a reality. Wilkins is also the editor of the San Francisco Call Bulletin. After another three years, the city officials of San Francisco made a formal request to O'Shaughnessy to investigate the possibility of constructing a bridge that spans the strait and the engineer immediately began consulting with colleagues all over the country. The concept of creating a connection between San Francisco and the North Bay was appealing, but it was also feasible from a monetary standpoint. The majority of those with insider knowledge of the industry hypothesized that such an endeavor would have a price tag of more than $100 million, and that is simply could not be constructed. Joseph Behrman Strauss, on the other hand, argued against this view. Strauss, an engineer located in Chicago, provided a proposal that not only made it seem possible to build a bridge, but made it seem downright reasonable as well. According to Strauss' plan, the construction of the bridge could be done for a cost of between $25 million and $30 million. On June 28, 1921, Strauss gave O'Shaughnessy and Edward Rainey, who was a secretary to James Rolfe, the mayor of San Francisco, his preliminary sketches. O'Shaughnessy made the design public December 1922, and although the press described it as ugly, there was surprisingly little public opposition to the ambitious endeavor, despite the fact that his original design a $17 million symmetrical cantilever suspension hybrid span needed some tweaking and didn't pan out. Despite this, Shaughnessy was able to complete the ambitious project. The construction process There were quite a few roadblocks to overcome before building could begin. Despite the fact that the majority of residents were willing to support the gigantic effort. To begin, O'Shaughnessy and Strauss were tasked with establishing a special district within the state of California that would be responsible for supervising the financing, design, and construction of the bridge. This was done in order to ensure that all countries would have a say in the matter. However, in the end, the decision regarding the future of the bridge was made by the War Department. According to the law, the War Department had the authority to rule in harbor construction that could potentially affect shipping traffic or military logistics. Things started getting sticky on May 16, 1924, when the War Department conducted a hearing to consider the potential impact that the bridge could have on navigation and the financial burden it would place on the government. The local ferry companies were particularly vocal in their opposition to the bridge and began a serious anti-bridge campaign. 
in an effort to halt construction of the structure. This opposition came from a large number of people. They were successful for a period of eight years. But after nearly a decade of jurisdiction and uncertainty, Strauss and O'Shaughnessy were able to create the Golden Gate Bridge and Highway District, which is composed of the area's six member counties. The Golden Gate Bridge and Highway District was incorporated by the California State Legislature in 1928, as the sole entity responsible for the financial design, construction, and financing of the future bridge. On August 11, 1930, Secretary of War Patrick Hurley issued the construction permit, and on January 5, 1933, the construction process officially began. This was nearly three years after the permit was issued. At this point, the vast majority of residents were excited, and a groundbreaking ceremony held at a nearby crazy field helped get the locals stamped up for what was going to be a process that is somewhat lengthy, but easier than they had anticipated it would be. Paolo Cosley Schwartz, the public affairs manager of the Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District, writes an email that an interesting fact about the Golden Gate Bridge is that it was completed ahead of the schedule and under budget, a rarity in today's construction world. This statement was made in reference to the fact that the bridge was finished ahead of schedule and under budget. The construction of the bridge was completed in May of 1937, six months ahead of the schedule and under budget. The bridge construction was cost approximately $39 million, which is equivalent to over $500 million in today's money. Not only did the bridge become famous for being a project that was accomplished in a short amount of time and with little difficulty in comparison to other massive constructions, but it also left it mark in history by revolutionizing the methods of construction and precautions that were taken during the processes. According to Collisette Schwartz, the Golden Gate Bridge was a pioneering project protecting workers by requiring bridge builders to wear hard hats and installing the first safety net for bridge workers. The Golden Gate Bridge was a pioneering project for protecting workers by requiring builders to wear hard hats. Although, 11 men lost their lives during construction of the Golden Gate Bridge, which was not unheard of in that dangerous era of building. A safety net that was suspended under the floor of the bridge during construction saved the lives of 19 men who became known as the Halfway to Hell Club. As of its completion in 1937, the Golden Gate Bridge has been transformed into a suspension bridge that spans the gap between San Francisco Bay and the Pacific Ocean. It is generally agreed upon that the Golden Gate Bridge best exemplifies both San Francisco and the state of California as a whole. It is a marvel of engineering that was accomplished in just four years, thanks to the admirable human vision. Dutch determination and tactical expertise. When the bridge was first constructed, its dimensions were as follows. Its length was 8,981 feet, its width was 90 feet, and its water clearance was 220 feet. Two primary cables travel across the tops of the tower and are secured in a concrete arc ridges situated at both ends of the structure. The length of water contained within the two primary cables is 129,000 kilometers, which was planned in a period of six months, which is sufficient to go approximately six times around the world. Design Consideration in Engineering Suspension bridge design is a challenging task that calls for high levels of mathematical and engineering expertise. Since all materials bend under pressure, the design is complicated, needs careful thought and many fronts. Determining the range of deck movement at various locations due to varying load conditions is crucial. 
heavy traffic. Traffic with determinants, top, and movements, and light or no traffic are the different load conditions. The deck movement due to its weight, environmental temperature range, wind velocity, deck sag between suspension cables, elongation of suspension cables, etc., were all carefully considered by the bridge designer. It's understandable that modern engineering techniques wouldn't have allowed for this consideration in bridge design back in then. However, due to the meticulous engineering that went into its planning, design, and construction, the Golden Gate Bridge is still regarded as a marvel of engineering world. The exposed structure of the bridge presented the greatest engineering challenge in terms of withstanding the high-velocity windstorms the blue wind of the Pacific Ocean. The maximum allowable mid spin swing on the bridge was calculated to be 27 feet, and the structure was built to withstand width with up to 100 miles per hour. The major suspension cable transfers the weight of the vehicles and bridge deck to the anchor blocks and bridge towers via suspender rods. Tensile forces are applied to the main suspension cable with the suspender rods. The forces that stretch the cable are those of this type. Several smaller diameter steel cables are wound together to form one massive stranded steel cable, which forms the main suspension cable that sags in parabolic shape. The tower experiences a counteracting compressive force due to the cable's tensile forces. There will be no buckling of the tower under these compressive forces because of its sturdy construction. By this logic, we can deduce that a great deal of thought and planning went into the design of this bridge, so that it would stand the task of time and be considered an engineering marvel. What are your thoughts in this rigorous engineering process? Let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. See you in the next one.